Okay, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, the last time we actually uploaded a video, it's all about a reinforced concrete and flexural analysis dealing with uncracked beams. That means we are considering the area gross of the section. So this time we will be dealing with the concrete that is cracked, okay? So how are we going to analyze the flexure if the concrete is cracked? So let's proceed. Okay, so let's take this as our example. Calculate the bending stresses in the beam shown. So this will be our beam. Okay, it's obvious, 12 by 20, and we have three bars there, number nine. So the area, of, the total area of the steel there is three inches squared. So that's the section. We have to calculate the bending stress in the beam by using a transformed area. So this will be our transformed area. With the given parameters, which is F prime C is equal to 3000 PSI, the N is equal to 9, and the moment is equal to 70 feet kips. Later on, I will be talking or I will be discussing about this N, what actually this N means. Okay. So, if you have another section there at home, how are you going to make it a transformed area? It's simply we have to consider that in somewhere in the middle of this section, we have the neutral axis. So we, that is our neutral axis here, which we cut it off there. So we don't know the distance from the extreme fiber of the beam down to our neutral axis. So we take this as our X. Okay, so the base remains as 12. And then this and this section here is our bar so it is referring to our bars given as n a s so we have to multiply this value of n to our area of steel so nine times three that is actually 27 inches squared so if our bar to the extreme fiber is 17 then that means that the, the distance from the neutral axis down to our bars is actually 17 minus x. So that is how we make our transformed area. And transformed area is actually a key point if we are dealing with the crack, okay? So if we used the gross area that is actually uncracked, but if you are required to solve a tra using a transformed area, that actually means that you are solving a crack beam problems, okay? Our first step there is we have to take a moment about the neutral axis. But take note that we're not involving forces here because the force, we, we say that the force of, for the tension and the compression are equals. We take this as equal. So what we just have here is the area times the distance okay area times the distance this is for the tension and this is for the compression okay so that is how we make it so what is this distance that distance is from the middle of our area or from the center of our area down to our neutral axis so that so from the cent center of our area down to our neutral axis so that is that D there so area of the tension that is actually the area of our bar given as N A S and then for the compression that is this section so therefore we have 12 times dx and then that distance of the centroid of this area down to our neutral axis is x over 2 so that is the x over 2 there is actually equals to the 27 here which is 9 times 3 the n is 9 the area of steel is 3 okay so we have 27 and then that center here of the bar down to the neutral axis is 17 inches minus x so simplifying that equation we could say that we have 6x squared is equal to 459 minus 27x by which we get our x 
equals to 6.780 inches. So that means that the value of x here is 6.7. I mean 6.780 inches. So okay, for our next step, okay, we have to get the moment of inertia. The formula for that is this one: the summation of inertia plus the area d squared. So the d is the distance from the center of the area considered down to the neutral axis okay so let's take as an example let's start with this section so for the compression section so we have b b times the h cube over 12 plus the area d squared so h is x so that is our H so which is equals to 6.78 so we have to substitute that so we have C12 multiplied by 6.78 cube over 12 plus 12 times 6.78 multiplied by D and the D since it is a rectangle it's just the half of the height so which is x over 2 or the 6.78 over 2 squared okay so if we try to simplify this equation we can get 12 multiplied by 6.78 cube multiplied by 1.12 uh, 1 over 12 plus 1 over 4 okay so the inertia, therefore, so 1 over 12 plus 1 over 4, that is 1 third plus, multiplied by 12 multiplied by 6.78 cube. Plus, this is for the compression or for the concrete. And for the tension or for the steel, we just have to consider the area and its distance to the neutral axis. You don't have to stress yourselves about that. You just have to use the area d squared for the steel, okay? So for the inertia, we have 40, uh, 4, 4,067 inches to the power of 4. So that is how we get our inertia. Again, so for the concrete considered, we have to use the inertia plus area d squared and for the steel we just have to consider the area d squared okay and for our last step we have to compute the value of our bending stress okay so before that i would just like to um, introduce this diagram so we have the gross area on the left side which is this one that is the area gross so after that we take uh, the transform area we get the transform area which is this part here and we know that this is n a s so what is really the n okay what's the function of the n this is the stress diagram here that is the stress diagram okay so the N is just the elasticity of the steel over the elasticity of the concrete, okay? So we have to understand that the elasticity of concrete is different from the elasticity of the steel. So since we take that the, the tensile force is equal to the compression force, but of course the area that will res resist those forces for the concrete is different from the area for the tension because the elasticity of both materials are different. So therefore, N is equals to E S over E C or the elasticity, elasticity of the steel over the elasticity of the concrete. The concept for that is if N is equals to 10, Therefore, the force that is carried by a 1 inches squared steel is equivalent to 10 inches squared of the concrete. So, this we call N as the modulus ratio. Okay, so the 1 inches steel, 1 inches squared steel, would carry a certain force 
and the equivalent for that if the certain amount of force will be received by a concrete the area of concrete that will resist that force is 10 inches squared okay so that is the equivalent uh, area for steel and the equivalent area for the concrete at a certain force okay so that's the that's the that's the purpose of the N. So if the stress diagram is shown like this, since the stress is called the force over area, then our stress for the steel will become Fs over N. Since again the formula of stress is force over area, so Fs over N. So to get the real value of our Fs, we just have to multiply it by N. So for the stress of the concrete, we have moment multiplied by the distance to the neutral axis over I. And then for the steel also, N, M, Y over I. So I hope you understand that, okay? And now we will be able to solve our bending stress for the concrete and for our steel, which is given by the formula M, Y over I. And our steel of, is, of course, multiplied by our modulus ratio, which is the N. So, for the concrete, we can solve it 70 feet kips, okay? That is multiplied by 1,000, so we get 70,000 feet pounds. Kips to pounds, we just have to multiply it by 1,000. And then we also multiply it by 12 to make our feet into inches, okay? So, and then divided by our moment of inertia, which is 4,067 inches to the fourth. So, you might be wondering why I use 6.78. That is because that is the distance of our X and the maximum or the stress of the concrete actually, this is, this is the, the FC or the, the, stress for the concrete that we we want to get then that value there is that distance there is x so we use 6.78 and the same is true with our steel which is 17 minus x so the distance that we use is 10.22 okay the same procedure the, the only thing that that is different is we multiply the steel by 9 okay so we have 18,998 PSI for our steel so you can see that the stress is different for each of the stresses so so for the bending stress for the concrete that is 1400 PSI and for the steel is 18,998 PSI and I hope you understand that why we use 6.78 and 10.22 and how we also get our moment of inertia and what is the um, modulus ratio okay so i hope you understand all our lessons for today thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe on my channel